you're a jest too marvelous too marvelous for words like glorious glamorous and i don't stand by amorous it's all up to the wonderful i'll never find the words that say enough tell enough I mean, they're just not swell enough. You're much too much, and just too very, very to ever be in Webster's dictionary. And so I'm far away, a love song from the birds to tell you that you're my to marvelous you're too marvelous for words like glorious and glamorous and that old stand by and amorous it's all I'll do wonderful I never find the words that say enough tell enough I mean they're just not swell enough you're much too much and just too very very to ever be in Webster's dictionary and so I'm borrowing a love song from the birds to tell you that you're too marvelous, too marvelous for words, Thomas. Dick 
missionary and so I'm borrowing a love song from the birds to tell you that you're marvelous oh to tell you you're incredible to tell you you're too marvelous for words Thank you very much.
This is a tune that closed the album. And it's called Timba de la Buena. Timba is the, the latest rhythm that was invented in Cuba a few years ago. And they call it Timba. T-I-M-B-A. Timba. And, um, and this is the new Timba. But uh, we really need your collaboration. I would love to see you all dancing here tonight. Shaking your, shaking your booty. Shake it, baby, shake it. Y dice así. Hey. Vengo tocando timba de la buena. Pa' que el lobo se baila como quiera. Vengo tocando timba de la buena. Pa' que el lobo se baila. La timba cubana se baila.
try to think that love's not around Still it's uncomfortably My old heart ain't gaining no ground Because my angel eyes ain't here Angel eyes that old devil sent They glow on been misspent, misspent on angel eyes tonight. So drink up all you people, order anything you see, how fun, you happy people. The drink and the laughs on me Pardon me But I gotta run The facts uncommonly clear I gotta find Who's now number one Alex Frank on the bass, everybody. It begins 
the sound of violins, the song of birds high on the wing. You taught my heart to sing. Why does this that heart of mine feel like a Valentine? Suddenly it's spring You taught my heart to sing My heart was an empty shell A very an emotional moment for me when I sold steamers I had figured this was the end of steamers 
the day that I found out that Steamers is coming back and, and at this amazing place, Campus Jacks, I, I, I was like the best Christmas gift. When Terrence Love from Steamers and Jacks kind of combined to create these Steamers Jazz Nights, it just seemed like the most, most perfect thing to have happen. The whole musical community here is excited about that. Seeing, wow, what a lovely place. It's got beautiful sound, light, video, everything, and the food was fabulous. And they were doing the thing right. One of the things that I love most about Campus Jacks is when the sound system and the stage is so beautiful, the best musicians in the world want to play there. I talk to musicians and I go, hey, you want to come down and play with me at Campus Jacks? Yeah. Campus Jacks, yes! Well, I've been all over the world and I've seen a lot of different musical environments. The talent here is so off the charts. I mean, it's hard for people that aren't from here to understand how good here is. Only the best musicians, all the time. It's one of the things I want to do is present the music in the greatest way. I want the musicians to feel welcome. I want them to feel at home. I want them to feel like they're just not background music. The team here has just made so many efforts to not only bring the musicians and the audience together, like Terrence was doing for so long, but to do it at a really high quality. I've been doing clubs for, you know, again, more years than I care to count. And this is a very rare um, example of, of how a music venue can run and, and be set up. And I, I feel nothing but care is given to uh, what we're trying to present here and how we're trying to present it. It really is recapturing that magic. There's an electricity. You know something special is happening and you're a part of it. And that's what I love about walking into Campus Jacks. Steamers Jazz is back and it's at Campus Jacks. Steamers Jazz at Jacks. Let's hear for Elena Gilliam. I'm Terrence Love. Welcome to Steamers Jazz at Campus Jacks. And uh, it's a special night tonight, but I want to let you know I'm proud to be a part of that. Uh, I'll be up there on the stage uh, introducing Elena, and it's going to be a wonderful show with Bob Barrett, Tony Guerrero, Elena, and there'll be a full-blown orchestra. Tickets are available for that at campusjacks.com and all the other shows that we have. Uh, let's give her some support. It's going to be a release there, and we're really happy to be a part of that, too. All right, tonight, um, we've got a special night, you know. Tony Guerrero, Jeremy Siskin, they're going to be doing... They're going to be doing a, a CD release of uh, this wonderful meta jazz produced by both Tony and Tim Ellis. Um, and it's a, it's a fantastic duo together. They're going to be performing it to you. And there's no drummer, although I know Matt Johnson's out here, somebody. Somewhere he's out there, but there's no drummer. So we do ask that you do kind of be quiet during the performance. It makes it uh, much more pleasurable for the players up here that they're listening. I know it's hard when you've got 100 people in a room, but if you can, you'll enjoy it even more. So anyway, upcoming in the next few weeks, uh, next week we have 
Ann Walsh and Tom Zink, wonderful vocalist, and her husband Tom on piano. They'll be bringing their group there here on Thursday, and the tickets are available at uh, campuschecks.com. Coming up on uh, March 22nd and 23rd, Friday and Saturday, the wonderful Keiko Matsui will be here. And there's only a few seats left for that, so if you're interested, make sure you pick them up. Nathan East will be here with his son Noah, wonderful jazz bassist, on the 30th. And I think that's all. Oh, plus we want to thank Yamaha Piano for bringing this in. Ed Whiting also took care of tuning this baby up. This is a C7, I believe. And uh, it's like the one I had at Steamers, and it's just beautiful. And we're happy to have it here, and we thank them for doing that. Anyway, I think that's all of the uh, formalities. Nothing left to do but to introduce the wonderful guys. Uh, who should I go first, Tony or Jeremy? Tony Guerrero. <laughs> Age before looks. Tony on the trumpet and flugelhorn. Jeremy Siskin. Jeremy, come on up. And just so they don't have to toot their own horn, these are available for $20. There, there's a merch table in the back there. Make sure you pick one up. I'm sure they'd be happy to sign it. One more time for Jeremy Siskin and Tony Guerrero. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Hey, thank you all for being here tonight. So um, to give you a little explanation of what the origins of tonight, and uh, I used to fly stunt kites. It was a pastime of mine for a season. And I don't know if you know what a stunt kite is. It's a kite with, uh, it's, you know, it's like the big triangle looking kite. And it usually has two lines, and that means you can control it. And so when you've ever seen a kite spinning around like that, and as I got more and more into it, have you ever flown stunt kites? It's very exciting to fly. It's not like just holding a string and you're watching it in the air. You're, you're controlling it. And um, when I got into really into it, I started buying bigger kites and bigger ones. And then one day I bought, a, I think it was like an eight-foot kite. And I took it down to the beach on a really windy day. And I swear I was holding on to a jet plane. Like it was, I thought for sure it was going to rip my arms off. It was like, it was just scary. But basically that was all I could do was just hold on. That's kind of like tonight for me. Because... Um, when I, so I'd known Jeremy for, uh, of, of Jerry for quite a few years. Jerry, Jeremy, <laughs> I've known of Jeremy. I knew him as Jerry back then. Um, but we didn't work together uh, until a really weird gig during uh, quarantine season. And, um, but then after that, we did a couple gigs together. And um, every time we played together, I would just hear him go, man, just what an incredible gift he has. And I thought I really could sit and listen to him all night and uh, not care about the rest of the band. I thought, well, this is one way I could do that, is I could just do a duo with him. And then it's mostly just him and me just hanging on for dear life. And that's where, that's where tonight came. And then after we did one gig together like this, it, which was here and it was back in, I don't know, November, I can't remember when it was. Um, uh, we just decided to go into the studio and, uh, and do it. And so we booked a date and went in and we cut 19 songs in one day, which is, that's a lot. And the way we did it is we didn't rehearse anything. We just got together in the studio, brought some, a bunch of, you know, we know a lot of tunes. We brought some charts and just said, hey, let's try this one. And we would talk about the intro and the ending just so it wouldn't fall apart on, uh, on either end. And then the rest of it in, the, in between was just on the spot. And um, that's what we're going to do tonight. We're not even going to do all the songs from the record. We're just going to do whatever we feel like and see what happens. Were you going to say something? Because I've been talking a long time. I'm just the kite. <laughs> just the kite. All right, that last song was uh, from Guys and Dolls, and it's called, uh, uh, it's one of my favorite tunes to play. It's called I've Never Been in Love Before, um, which isn't true. I've been in love many times, just three times just today. <laughs> um, we'd like to do a song now that came out in the 1960s. This, was called, this one's called On a Clear Day. See, I didn't even tell Jeremy what, what it was before we started it.
That's a great tune. These are all great tunes. I know that because I put this book together just filled with all the songs I love. So I know these are great tunes. Um, we're going to do a song now. Um, I had it in mind, and now I can't remember what it is. Oh, one from the album. This is um, uh, actually the opening track. It's called There Will Never Be... No. Yeah, There Will Never Be Another You. Right? I think so. Does anybody, ha anybody have the album? Which is the first one? Yeah, There Will Never Be Another You. That's the one.
Well, I think I described the evening perfectly well. <laughs> um, I do, throughout the night, I've got a couple of little surprise things uh, or just things I want to show you or uh, talk to you about. And the first one I, I wasn't planning on because it didn't happen until I got here. And uh, first of all, how about it for this gorgeous piano from Yamaha? <laughs> Um, both uh, Jeremy and I are what they call Yamaha artists. We've had a long association with the companies. I don't know when yours began. Mine began back in 1990 as a, in the trumpet division, of course, and I'm, so I've been a Yamaha artist all those years. What about you? Mine started when I was four years old. This is when I started Yamaha lessons uh, <laughs> in their music education system. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So probably about the same year. About the same time. <laughs> <laughs> that was... A that was actually unnecessary. <laughs> but they graciously allowed us to have this piano, and they brought it out for us. And, um, and so uh, if it sounds great right now, because when you move a piano, you know, it falls out of tune. And in the room tonight is Ed Whitting, who tuned the piano. And he's been a friend of mine and tuned pianos around town. And like major halls, he's got been the guys doing that, and so Ed's back there, and thank you, Ed. But when Ed told me he had something for me, and he brought it, I'm just gonna share it with you, because I thought it was so cool, but this, he's had this for many years. I don't know what year it was, it doesn't have the year on it, but Ed, are you still here? Yeah. Okay, what year, do you know about year, which year this was? Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I, that's when I was born. <laughs> Anyways, it's, it's an envelope, and it's from the Harry James Orchestra. It's on their, their stationery, their letterhead. And it's this beautiful sign. There's three eight by tens of Harry James, the great Harry James, including this one, which is signed by him. It's just, I, I thought, and, it, and he wanted me to have it. And I'm just so appreciative of that. It's such a beautiful thing. So thank you so much. I am a, I'm a collector of such things, and Ed knows this about me. Um, in fact, the tie I'm wearing tonight once belonged to Artie Shaw. I, I have things like that, yeah. So I appreciate that very much. And so I guess we should probably do a song where I play trumpet now, although I can't play anything like Harry James, but um, one of the songs I just passed by was Stardust. Why don't we do that?
Thank you very much. Well, as uh, Terence mentioned, we do have CDs available. Wait, where'd my CDs go? Where did I put them? They're on the floor. <laughs> I don't know how many of you have CD players anymore. You know, but for a long time, nobody had turntables, and look at us now. So they may be coming back, right? But we do have CDs available. We'd love to send you home with one. And for those of you who don't have CD players, uh, don't despair. If you buy five, they make a lovely coaster set. <laughs> so that is also an option for you. But, um, so I don't know how they're doing that. Is, a, a, is there a table in the back? or? Anyways, we'll figure it out. If you want one, we'll figure it out for you. Um, and also, of course, the album is available everywhere you steal mu music for free on the internet. So, yeah, <laughs> there's that too. Um, okay, we are going to play a song now, and this one is another one that came to mind. That Oh, I remember what it is. We're going to do a song. This is a song that not a lot of people do for some reason because it's such a great song. It's called uh, uh, I Will Wait For You. You know, remember this song?
We didn't even talk about that ending, and it worked out pretty good. <laughs> it did. <laughs> um, I was just reminded uh, on the way over here that when Jeremy, the first time Jeremy and I had any real conversation, it was uh, we went out to lunch, and we discovered our mutual love of Norm MacDonald, the comedian. And then the very next day, Norm died. <laughs> Unexpectedly. like. I like to think we weren't to blame. Um, I wanted to, uh, is, um, is Tim around? Tim, are you? I'd like to go to the art portion of our slideshow, please, before we go to my summer vacation photos. <laughs> so um, uh, um, I've always loved to draw. Um, I'm OK at it, but I, I mostly am. am uh, just a fan of the process and, and finding new ways to draw. And uh, a couple years ago, I started drawing again. I hadn't really drawn for a long time, and I started doing a bunch of little jazz illustrations. And I found myself gravitating towards mid-century artwork and, uh, and graphic design, not necessarily illustration all the time, but even graphic design from the mid-century. And so when it came time to do this album cover, um, I, was, I had been in the process of doing a bunch of uh, illustrations, like graphic illustrations based on photographs of famous jazz musicians. And so if, yeah, there you go. So there's a bunch of them right there. And those are, um, I just had, was going through this series, thank you. And um, uh, each one of them is individual, that's just a big snapshot of a bunch of them. And so when I was uh, working on, okay, what are, what's this cover gonna look like? I thought, well, maybe I'll do that with pictures of us. And so I did this one of Jeremy Look at that. And then as I started to work on myself, I thought, this feels really awkward to be drawing a picture of myself, and I stopped the process right there. So I only got as far as Jeremy. But I, what I wanted to do, Jeremy, and my gratitude for doing this project with me, I just wanted to do a little print of it for you. I was going to say, Tony, my, my mom's here, so if you wanted to start a silent auction, we could really get the oh, bidding okay. going. <laughs> yeah, it felt a little awkward drawing myself. And so I ended up going for a more minimalistic, uh, I had this little design. I love the colors of that era, and I ended up with what became the album cover, and it was based on those two dots and that color scheme. And, and then the title just kind of came easy because we were using duo tones and wow we're a duo look at that and we're making tones it was perfect so i was very <laughs> proud of that and um anyways that's that story <laughs> mostly i'm just trying to stall because it's hard to play trumpet this much <laughs> and that's when matt johnson would say it's hard to listen to <laughs> Okay, I know what I wanted to do now. So let me, let me tell you the other thing I was gonna talk about. This will give me a little, little break on the chops here. So, um, gosh, Janet, it's been, um, it's been 14 years. Is that right? Could that be right? Yeah, 20, 2010 was when I met you guys. Yeah, so it's been 14 years since then. Um, 14 years ago, a friend of mine named Allison said, hey, I'm friends with this couple um, would you like to meet them? And when she told me who they were, I said, of course, like, first of all, how in the world do you know them? And um, she told me how they'd met. And, and uh, Al Ahrens, um, let me show you a picture of Al Ahrens. This, this is Al. This is Al, I think in 2011, he came over to my studio and we, um, we filmed a little mini documentary about his life because Al Ahrens, uh, was a noted trumpet player for many years in a lot of different uh, arenas. He played with uh, Henry Mancini's orchestra through the 70s and uh, did a ton of stuff. But the thing that I knew him mostly for was that in the heyday of the Count Basie Orchestra, 1959 to 69, um, he was the trumpet player in, in that band. He was one of the four trumpet players in the Count Basie Orchestra. And if we go to, I think, the next slide, let's see. Like, that's the Rat Pack. That's Al looking over Frank's shoulder right there. Um, next slide. And this is uh, them in the studio recording. You see Sinatra in the back booth, and that's Al in the foreground there. So he was on some pretty great classic records, Sinatra Live at the Sands, 
and uh, all those great records. And Al, you know, so I got to know Al in those uh, few years before he passed in 2015. Is that right? 2015. And um, and just what a what a beautiful soul. And we got to, uh, I, like I said, we filmed a little, I think, 30 or 40 minute documentary about his life. Just told his story in, in shirts and pictures, and that's online. You can find it. It's called Al Aaron's A Life in Music. And um, that, after his passing, the um, uh, Musical Instrument Museum in Phoenix, Arizona, took one of his horns and did a display on Al Aaron's. And so that video, part of that video, is showing in the, uh, at that museum in Phoenix. And just very proud that I got to know him and got to meet you guys. And, and so Janet, his wife, is here. And um, I can't see you. Or Oh, I'm, I'm point going the wrong way. Sorry, she's right over there. Sorry. And so um, one of the things that uh, um, I get to do tonight is, oh, I have to tell you the story. So um, if you show me the next picture. Okay, so this is the Count Basie Orchestra, and you see Sinatra up there in the left. So I'm guessing this is around 1965. Maybe that was taken I at the Sands, but that's Sinatra and Basie right next to him. And you see Al right there on the left, and next to him is another trumpet player, named Sonny Cohn, C-O-H-N. First of all, Janet, I noticed something in this photo that I've never noticed before. You can tell there's a lot of love, and I've heard this about the Basie band uh, from other people who, have, who were close to people in that band, that they were very, um, it was kind of a family for a long time. And I love, if you see over here, like he's got his arms around Sonny and Al, and I think that's Sonny Payne playing, um, uh, who's the drummer, I th and is that, Matt, is that Sonny? Right in the middle, yeah. And he and Al are holding hands, and I thought, that's such a sweet little moment there, right? But then I noticed the guy next to Sonny looking at that, going, what's going on over here? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but there's a great story about Sonny and Al, and uh, we get to share in that a little bit tonight, in that um, at one point around 1967 or so, um, Al left his horn on a bus or on a train or something. And so Sonny lent him his horn. And Sonny had this uh, beautiful um, horn that had his name engraved on the side. If you go to the next slide, and you can see Sonny's name engraved there on the slide. So that horn was on all these classic recordings, Sinatra at the Sands and all the Basie records of that era. And uh, Janet has allowed me to bring that horn here tonight. So I'm going to play a song on it. So this is that horn. And you can't see it from out there, I'm sure, but, but there's the uh, inscription of Sonny's name. So Al, from what I understand, played this horn for the rest of his career. Is that right? Yeah, and he retired in, uh, like, 2002, I think. It, and I think his last performance was on the uh, Academy Awards, playing for the, when the, the movie Chicago was out, and he played in that, that thing that they did on the Academy Awards. So, yeah, so this horn has a whole lot of life to it, so much so that... When she brought it to me, it wasn't actually playable. There were some issues just from the age, so I took it to a place to have it worked on, and, and he said, yeah, this thing has seen some life. So he got it back in playing shape. So we're going to play a little tune on this. Um, I don't even know which one yet. Um, so give me a second to just decide what that's going to be. Oh, this looks like a good one.
This horn sounds pretty nice. We're gonna do another song. I'm gonna play on this. Let's do a, let's do a ballad. Um, we're gonna you know we have, we've only done one song that's actually on the album, so let's do another one that's on the album. We're gonna do a, this is an old Errol Garner classic that I love. This is a beautiful ballad called Misty. Thank you. 
Thank you again, Janet, for giving me the honor of playing that tonight. Um, okay, another little thing I'd like to do now. Um, I think, if I recall, you're sitting over there. This is, I'd like to do a song for Alvin and Del Furman. You're right there? Okay, there they are. Terrence, I don't know if you can see them, or if you're even still here. Did you stay, did Terrence leave? He did? What a loser. I was gonna celebrate uh, his upcoming 70th birthday. He said he wanted no party, and I was gonna say, embarrass him here, but it's coming up. Maybe 70, yeah, it's probably why he left. <laughs> that, and he has to be back at the home before <laughs> nine o'clock, so. I think I'm gonna riff for about 10 minutes on Terrence since he's not here. Anyways. Uh, Alvin and Dell used to come to see me play at steamers all the time and so Terrence as you know ran steamers for many years and ran it right into the ground <laughs> and um, and uh, we just reconnected and and uh, they mentioned that there's a one particular tune that I've recorded that they listen to a lot and so I thought I'd like to do that for you tonight and um, it's a beautiful song from again from the 1960s I don't know where I put the chart though there it is um, and it's not a, not a, it hasn't been recorded very often by many people, um, but I, def I found it on an old record and I just loved it. And it's called Love is Stronger Far Than We. It's a beautiful bossa nova by Francis Lay or Lai, I'm not sure how you say it, L-A-I.
I think we need to squeeze in for the last couple of tunes, a couple of songs that are actually on the album. So I'd like to do a song now called Just Friends. And Thank you. Yeah, oh yeah, it's so much better on the album, all of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you didn't hear us talking about anything tonight about what we're going to do. We at least talked for a couple minutes there. Uh, maybe. And... Jeremy was sober when we recorded. There's a whole other thing, too. So. Thank you. 
Okay, I lied. I actually want to do two more from now, and that's because I forgot about this one tune. Is that okay? You're like, yeah, uh, 90 minutes is a long time for just piano and trumpet. <laughs> but before I do this song, I want to look up the lyrics, because I heard this song today, and I just thought, what a, what a beautiful little song. I'm not going to sing it, but um, I want you to hear the lyrics. Um, this is a song, uh, I'm going to read you the lyrics and then tell me if you know who, who this is by. These are the lyrics. The song is called, It's You I Like. And it goes, the lyrics are, it's you I like. It's not the things you wear, it's not the way you do your hair, but it's you I like. The way you are right now, the way down deep inside you, not the things that hide you, not your toys, they're just beside you. But it's you I like, every part of you, your skin, your eyes, your feelings, whether old or new. I hope that you'll remember, even when you're feeling blue, that it's you I like. It's you yourself, it's you, it's you I like. So that was written by Mr. Rogers. <laughs> and I heard it, and it's such a pretty little song. And um, I didn't know this until recently, but he actually, I think, was a music major. And, and like, yeah, he, he, um, I know he played piano. And he didn't play piano on the show. That was uh, Don Costa or one of somebody brilliant, amazing piano player on that show. But um, I want to play this song. It's called It's You I Like. Thank you. 
Very much. You good for one more? Okay, I'm going to let you choose by round of applause. Uh, up tempo or ballad? That wasn't applause, but it was the loudest.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hear for Jeremy Siskin. Tony Guerrero. Our very own duo tones. That's so good, Tony. You know, help us uh, keep this Cambrian explosion of creativity that pops right off this sacred space I call a stage. Keep it alive by this CD, would you? <laughs> tonight, and only tonight, well, at least tonight, everything that, uh, every, every penny that comes from the sales of these CDs tonight goes to these two gentlemen right here. So Well, then buy it, please. Stack up. That'll be $20 well spent. And hey, you can double it if you want to. Um, I'm sure they won't uh, resist that. But as you know, we, we've got a lot of things happening up here. And, and so much of what takes place uh, here in, and in the, uh, the Internet spaces and the virtual worlds beyond, you know, I, I really thank Tony for being a part of of just what we've been doing here and in the MetaJax world for the last several years and uh, really looking forward to uh, just continuing to watch just what Tony does. You know, because I call him, he's like our, our own personal Herb Alpert uh, right here. We've got our own. Uh, and uh, now you laugh, but I've been telling Tony that for But a I'm, while. I'm actually Mexican. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Right, see? But in, anyway, so I, I so appreciate uh, you, Tony, for, for everything you've done and, and bringing so many great folks. And, and Jeremy, th thanks for being part of the family here and making it possible for us to go and, and have Yamaha bring this piano, which is fantastic. But we're, we're going to be doing another album with Arturo this year. It's going to be with a big band, which is going to be exciting. And maybe we'll actually, uh, you know, we'll get nominated again. That would be fantastic as well. It's going to be a good time no matter what. We've got several projects coming up. And as you know, tonight with us, several things. Elena Gilliam is with us tonight, and you saw the video at the beginning. Now, come on. Wait, wait, I'm, I mean, gonna, I'm gonna just interrupt and introduce yeah, yeah. you. This is Tim Ellis, who is uh, part of the ownership here at the club, but also he's responsible for all the, the streaming, all the video that you see, and he's executive producing these albums, so he's not just coming up and, and filling in for Terrence here. So. But I am, I actually am. Because we've got so many great moving parts here, you know, Terrence and it, so many great things going on. I'm just happy to be uh, part of the ride. But Elena, you've got to come out. I mean, Orange County, this is an Orange County thing happening on April 7th at the Barkley, Orange County, with Elena, Orange County, produced by Tony, produced by Bob uh, Barrett and the orchestration. They went over, they went, uh, this album is going to be amazing. They went over to Budapest where they recorded the Budapest Symphony over there. And uh, this is a, I, I call it a lifetime achievement for Elena. And we should all be behind that. Bring friends. Let's pack the Barkley out. 750 people can fit there. Let's support her with everything we've got. Because, I mean, if music is alive in Orange County, and if it all has to start right here, then I say so be it. I'm here for it. We've been about this for a long time, and we're not going to stop. There's so much more to do. So I would just invite you to be a part of this thing because it's exciting. And it's global. I mean, Tonight, we had people joining us from all over the world. They get up early in Asia. They go to stay up late in Great Britain and in Europe. And it all starts on this little, this little speck right here, this little piece of sacred space, holy ground. And so it's Orange County. Here we are. Let's support Elena April 7th. Get your tickets for that. Uh, you can go to campusjacks.com and get that. Then uh, also, now in the house, our good friend Matt Johnson. The Jet Set. Now this thing, if you haven't been, heard those guys, they're doing right now, they're, they're in a season of doing these uh, Disney tunes done with these amazing arrangements, original arrangements of these Disney songs. And everybody involved in that band is all like a Disney person. They played there for years. So the Jet Set with Matt Johnson, they're going to be back here on June 27th. Don't miss that. It's an, it's an incredible show. And then on Cinco de Mayo, you know, Amazing talent has popped off this stage. Jeremy's got to go because he's going to take your money at the back with the selling the CDs. But <clears throat> so Cinco de Mayo, Leah Booth. <laughs> Leah Booth, we've just watched her so blossom, you know, here th from the before the pandemic, through the pandemic, and now. 
Uh, so Leah Booth is Cinco de Mayo. So that'll give you a reason to come out here for Cinco de Mayo. And uh, also, just pay attention, Tawanda, whose first show was out in our parking lot as a young, you know, like 22-year-old. She's on tour right now with the Postmodern Jukebox, which is a big deal. Her Postmodern Jukebox video already has over 600,000 views. And she is of this, this right here. And she represents us. And so she's going to be back again uh, in, the, in the fall. We've got a lot of incredible young ta talent up and coming. Let's support them all. And let's support our just the uh, legends like Elena Gilliam. So anyway, that's about all I got to say tonight. Give you a little breather to reach in and find that something for to change to throw at these guys for those CDs. But I thank you for being here. And on behalf of uh, Steamers Jazz at Jacks, as we call it on Thursday nights, T-Love, everybody, hope you're sleeping well out there, T-Love. And we will see you next time. Thank you.